In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up some of the settings and preferences in Octave, show you some of the hotkeys and shortcuts, and run our very first short Octave script. I've already pinned Octave to my taskbar, so I go down to the bottom right and I click on the icon right there, up pops Octave. Now what you're seeing on the screen here is already a bit of an Octave script right in the middle panel of the screen. I apologize for that. I recorded this a little bit out of order, but we'll get it all worked out by the end of the video. Jumping backward in time, let's look at how to set the preferences, make the font size bigger for one thing. On the right over here, we have the command window. So we can type in octave commands, I don't know, x equals four plus seven, and hit enter and get our results there. Now currently the font size is teeny, teeny, tiny. One of the first things I always like to do is make the font size quite a bit larger. So if you go to edit preferences, and I just like to generally make everything larger partly for the videos and partly just for my own eyesight. So toolbar icons, I'm gonna make them large. I'll leave everything else here the same for now. I will click apply, go to command, font size eight, that's way too small for me. Um, let's try 24, I don't know, hit enter there. All right, that's more what I'm talking about. Now we can actually read the text on the screen. I do appreciate that. Let's go back to edit preferences. See if there's anything else we want to change. You can do like dark mode if you want. I'll leave it in light mode just because I think that's what most people will use, but I actually do prefer the dark mode. So there's that checkbox there that's under command. All right, and for now I'm gonna leave everything else the same. So I'll click apply, okay. And we're back over here. This bottom left window I didn't talk about before. Uh, this is just your command history. So this is the history of commands that were typed into the command window over here. But mostly how I'm gonna be using Octave and also MATLAB is I'm gonna go click on this blank white rectangle with the green plus sign, and it's gonna open up an editor window. And this is where I'm going to type in basically my code. And I'll have it saved in a document so that I can run it at a later date. I can edit it uh, as I move forward and add more complexity to it. Now, it looks like the font size on this is again microscopic. So let's see if we go to this edit right here within the editor and it'll either be preferences or style preferences. Let's check style preferences actually. Yeah, so style preferences at the bottom. It's actually under preferences also under the editor tab at the very bottom. And I made this number right there under the diff. Uh, no, that's not diff, sorry, that's a different thing. Octave right here, just this number. I thought these were lined up for a second there, but that is incorrect. Octave, what uh, font would you like to use? Courier new, font size, I made it 20. I'm gonna make it even bigger. Like I just, apparently 24 is the maximum that doesn't spark joy, but that's okay. Um, I might even make it bold. Yeah, I'm gonna make it bold as well. I just like that big and easy to read. All right, let's do apply, do okay. And now we can see that doesn't look bold to me, but whatever there's our font size for now we're gonna go with it and do our best all right so um before we do anything let's actually save our our document here which it's gonna want me to do before i click like the run button the green run button so Control s or uh you know click on the save icon there uh let me actually create a desktop folder just for all my matlab stuff here and our first file name this will just be test.m Actually, I don't even need the .m because it'll add that file extension for me. So just test, just our first test document here. Save it. All right, so I was going to try and test out if CLC does the same thing in Octave as it does in MATLAB, but it didn't want to let me run that because this file that I just created is not in the load path. Now, if you get this error, what it means is the file that we just created is in a folder that's not along Octave's path it's not in a place that Octave's gonna look for it. So we need to tell Octave to be able to look in that folder. So now you can very easily fix this just by clicking add directory to load path. The other thing you can do is change directory. So add directory, like you can just click it and then it should work, but I'm gonna just change directory. Uh, and what that did is up in the upper left right here, you may have noticed that instead of the folder that I was previously in, I am now in that desktop MATLAB Octave folder where my file was created. All right, one of the first things I wanna do is I wanna have the editor visible as well as the command window visible at the same time. I don't wanna to have to click through these separate tabs at the bottom. Now this is somewhat due to personal preference. So if you like to lay out your windows differently, uh, you can do that, but here's what you can do. So I'm gonna get the command window open, right? So I had the editor before, right? This is my text document where I can just write whatever code I wanna write. 
but uh, I'm gonna click on the command window. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this bar, this darker gray bar at the top. I'm gonna drag it so until I just see this separate like blue rectangle right here and then drop it. And so now what I've got is I've got the command window up top and I've got this separate window along the bottom. Now I don't really care about the documentation right now or the variable editor, but I do want the editor. I would like both these to be viewable. Now I personally prefer a vertical layout rather than this stacked horizontal layout. Let me see if I can, yeah, that's what I want. It's a little bit tricky, right? So I just grabbed that uh, gray bar again and dragged it and I want it to the side of the command window. So I drop it right there and now I've got these two side by side. Now I don't actually care for this stuff at the bottom. I'm personally gonna close it. It's probably a better way to do that. But this is what I want. I wanna have some of my helpful information about like what folder I'm in, what workspace, what information is in the workspace. I wanna have that to the left. I wanna have my editor uh, taking up the majority of the space and the command window, which is essentially gonna be the output of my editor. I want that along the right side. So then typically I would do like CLC clear at the top. Uh, and what that'll do is this'll CLC will clean off my command window. I don't wanna say it deletes it because it doesn't actually delete anything. It just like erases anything viewed on the command window and clear deletes, truly removes everything from my workspace. But this basically just puts me at a blank slate. And then I can start doing whatever calculations I wanna do. X equals six, Y equals two, uh, Z equals X plus Y. I'm just doing an example here. All right, I can click the green button right here to both, and notice what it says when I hover. It's gonna save the file and run. So I click on that. Uh, I don't know, hopefully it doesn't prompt me for a new file name every time. Save, yes, that already exists. Oh, I opened up a new file. I didn't even realize I did that. All right, so that's fine. Uh, no, let's actually not do that. Cancel that. Cut that out, get rid of that, discard, go to test.m, paste it in there. No, no indentation. It can be finicky, especially uh, if you haven't used it in a while as I haven't. All right, let's try that again. Save and run it, there we go. We see all of our results appear in the command window. The command window is gonna be the place to look for the results, the output of our file here. Fantastic, so this works great. Now, if you're like me and you like to use keyboard shortcuts, I don't want to have to take my hands off the keyboard and reach for the mouse all the time to run my code. So what you can do is you can go up to the run icon right here and see, look, it says save file and run, that green button, it even shows the little green triangle there, F5. All right, so now I don't have to take my hands off the keyboard, mouse goes away, I just do F5 and it'll run uh, and since I've added in that display right there, now it says welcome to Octave right here. And uh, it automatically saves it when you run it as well, which is a nice handy little thing to have. All right, a common question that my students run into is what happens if you lose track of one of your windows? So there's little uh, X's in the corners of each of these sub windows and you can click them on purpose or on accident and remove the various windows. And so how do you get them back? Don't panic, you haven't permanently altered anything. Go up to window and you'll see these various show window options, right? Show the workspace, show the editor. Anything that you've gotten rid of, it won't have a check mark next to it. The editor still had a check mark because we hadn't gotten rid of that one. So we just go back in and we click whichever items we wanna show. I wanna bring back the command window, the uh, file browser showing my current folder and the workspace. And that's my setup. This is what I look at when I edit an Octave or when I edit in MATLAB. You'll see the same thing in those videos if you watch those. The options on the lower half of the window tab choose which subwindow is actually focused. So like if I start typing, where does that typing go into? Does it go into my command window? Does it go into my editor? Now. I wouldn't recommend using your mouse to go up to the window and then click on which window is focused. I would recommend using that window tab to remind yourself of what the shortcuts are, what those hotkeys are that you might wanna to use to switch between various windows so that you can avoid taking your hand off the keyboard, you can avoid using the mouse for both ergonomics and efficiency. I really recommend learning uh, hotkeys. It will make your life better in the long run. Please experiment with the interface, look at the different tabs, see what is available, try stuff out. You're not gonna permanently break anything and it's the best way, it's one of the best ways to learn. 
The very next video is going to be about installing MATLAB. The video after that is going to be about setting the settings and preferences in MATLAB, basically the companion part of this video right here. In MATLAB, it's going to be using Control Enter to run the code in the editor. Octave, it's a, just a different shortcut. It's F5 instead. Just be aware of that. I'm planning on probably making most of the videos in MATLAB, but I will test all of the code in Octave and I will let you know if there are any differences. So again, look down in the comments, uh, not the comments, look down in the description for uh, links to the full playlist uh, to learn more Octave and MATLAB.